Hi, this is the first of a few videos following up on my recent build of some contemporary display shelving. And today I'm going to be demonstrating how we take this rough timber and turn it into some rough blanks ready to make the components for the shelving unit. This whole build is unplugged, so the only safety equipment you'll need is probably at this stage when we're dealing with rough timber, you should be wearing some of these protective gloves. There's no need for ear protection, eye protection, or nose protection so that's why I like unplugged woodworking. Now as you can see this plank's uh, rather long it's too big for my small workshop to be swinging it around inside so I'm going to be breaking it down outside. Now I'm starting by assessing the timber and as I've said this end we get some run out on the grain so what's happening is the grain is going like this at the end whereas down here it's nice and parallel. Structurally, we wouldn't want to use this end. So if I was using this maybe as a joist and this end was pocketed in the wall, uh, it could be quite weak across here. So we'd remove that and work with all the straight grain. But when you make a piece of furniture, sometimes it's, it's nice to use the figure that you get from grain that's changing around like this. It can look really quite nice. And seeing as what we're building is going to be painted and it's not going to need an awful lot of structural integrity to it, um, I can use most of this. The other thing to look out for is checks in the end. This all looks fairly firm, but what I will do is leave a bit so that uh, when I cut to length, I'll be removing the very end. Now my pieces need to be laid out in the best way to use as much of the material as I can. The sides are about two foot long, so if I add a couple of inches to remove this end, that'll take me to there. Shelves are 18, so I've marked off across here at 20. So I better remove this end again on these. And you can see there's a step here between the two. Now, it might seem obvious um, to get this down to a manageable size just to cross cut straight down here to begin with. But then we'll end up with this little chunk here, which we won't have any use for. What I'll do is rip all the way to the length of the sides, and then I'll cross cut off this shorter section and that longer section. Now this top surface is a little bit rough and there are some corners missing off the back. So I want to leave a little bit more for the sides and shelves that I cut from this side. Uh, on this side we've got a lovely edge. Uh, I've checked it, it's nice and square. So I can come very close to the final dimension I want there. Mark my lengths previously, so let's just square those in. And now to create this line through the middle that we're going to rip to, um, we want it parallel to this side. This side looks reasonably straight, but rather than following something which is reasonably straight, let's make sure our line is straight. I'm going to use a chalk line. So if we put that in place, following those marks I made, pull it taut, that'll give me a straight line. And now I've got a nice clear line straight down the board, which I can saw to. Now I'm going to be using a rip saw, and you may be able to see here that the teeth are almost at 90 degrees to the tooth line, so almost coming up straight up and then sloped off the back. I say almost, most of them are done at 90 degrees, but on my saws I just do it perhaps a little bit under, so maybe 88, 89 degrees. That's very different from the cross-cut saw, which is probably more difficult to see. We've got slightly smaller teeth on this panel saw. They're done at 45 degrees. Now the difference in the angles there mean that the saws will cut better when they're driven through the wood at a different angle. And for a rip saw, it tends to be an angle of about 60 degrees to the wood is the most efficient. But that's only the case if uh, your skeleton and your muscles uh, can drive most powerfully at that angle. So really it's a case of start there 
and just vary either way and find the position that works best for you and you find easiest to cut. As with most saws, when you try and start a cut, if you start at the angle which cuts best through the wood and cuts most efficiently, you'll find that the teeth really want to hang up before you've started a cut. So you might find it easier to tip the saw back almost parallel with the work, so you're getting perhaps two, three teeth almost touching the wood there. Line everything up and gradually raise the saw up. If you've got three or more teeth engaged with the wood at any one time, it's far less likely to, to hang up like that. Now two things when you get started to look carefully at is A, you're going down plumb to the wood and basically do all this by eye but uh, you can check it out with a square. So you want to be coming plumb to the wood surface. You obviously want to be tracking the cut line and if you can eyeball both of those as you go you should get a relatively straight line. The width of the saw plate in the saw cut that you've made tends to keep it on track. There is a little bit of give because of the set in the teeth the kerf is slightly thicker than the blade so there is a little bit of steering that you could do. Obviously it's far better off to set off straight and stay straight the whole way but if you find you're going slightly offline a couple of strokes with the saw slightly steered uh, to get you back on track and then set back uh, to straight again should get you working nicely. This is obviously something you should practice a lot before you commit to any expensive timbers. Another thing to note is I'm using a lot of the tooth line. Um, so I'm going almost down to the handle this end, almost up to the tip at the other end. I've got a bit of spring on here because it's hanging off the bench. So I'm going to move it back now uh, so it's sort of supported a bit better uh, and then get going. So closer into the support now, I can uh, get the knee on the work, get my shoulder nice above the, above the, uh, the cut, my elbow, hand and shoulder all in line. Thankfully I've found a bit of shade now. Um, it's still very hot but it's better than it was. Lubrication. Don't forget to lubricate your saw. Bit of paraffin wax. Just help it glide through easier. Anything you can do to make it easier. Especially when you get to my age and you're as unfit as I am. the end of the cut you want to come up perpendicular so that you don't uh, rip into what's going to be stopped for maybe your next project now although none of these are perfectly square or flat it's worth squaring a line down just as a guide for when we cut this section out and this section at the back. And different ways of supporting it. This works for me for something this sort of size. So I clamp it between my legs. It's also down on the bench. I start my cut, my body position's good. I've got a straight arm 
between my hand, elbow and uh, my shoulder. I can also see both lines down the front and along the top. The other option is to put a foot on top and brace the wood from going backwards with the, with the knee. And as I get close to completing that cut, I need to come around and hold this section so it doesn't break off. Back to the other grip, gets me a bit closer. The saw cut I've got will guide the saw now so I don't need to worry about the lines. I personally like to use a heavily cambered iron for quick stock removal and also for rough um, squaring up of edges. I set the maximum exposure to the centre of the sole so I always know exactly where I'm removing the most material. The tags left from ripping are a great indication for the best direction in which to plane the wood. Initially I just want to remove enough of the rough sawn surface to accurately use winding sticks. If you don't have winding sticks, just make a pair, you'll be glad you did. Now switch to a straight iron to remove any of the slight ridges left behind by the cambered iron. Now it's very easy to see in which direction we need to plane to clean up the face at 90 degrees to the one we've just done. With both blanks prepared I can now mark out to cut the first board off each blank. These are cut a little over thick to allow for wood movement and cleaning up the rough sawn surface. Finally I can cut the individual boards and I've switched to the Ryoba saw to do that.